is the 20th of July 2011 and we're on the fifth night on the Diga Nikaya talks. And we come to Diga Nikaya Sutta number six, Mahali Sutta, about heavenly sights, soul and body. Thus have I heard. Once the Lord was staying at Vesali, at the Gable Hall in the Great Forest, and at that time a large number of Brahmin emissaries from Kosala and Magadha were staying at Vesali on some business, and they heard say, the ascetic Gautama, son of the Sakyans, who has gone forth from the Sakyan clan, is staying at Vesali, at the Gable Hall, in the Great Forest. And concerning that blessed Lord, a good report has been spread about. This blessed Lord is an Arahan, Samasam Buddha, perfected in knowledge and conduct, a welfarer, knower of the worlds, unequal trainer of men to be tamed, teacher of gods and humans, a Buddha, a blessed Lord. He proclaims this world with its gods, Maras and Brahmas, the world of ascetics and Brahmins, with its princes and people, having come to know it by his own knowledge. He teaches a Dhamma that is lovely in its beginning, lovely in its middle, and lovely in its ending, in the spirit and in the latter, and he displays the fully perfected, thoroughly purified, holy life. And indeed, it is good to see such arahants. And so these Brahmin emissaries from Kosala and Mangada went to the great forest to the Gable Hall. At that time, the Venerable Nagita was the Lord's personal attendant. So they approached the Venerable Nagita and said, Reverend Nagita, where is Reverend Gotama now staying? We would like to see him. Friends, it is not the right time to see the Lord. He is in solitary meditation. But the Brahmins just sat down to one side and said, When we have seen the Lord Gautama, we will go. Just then, Othada, the Lichavi, came to the gable hall with a large company, saluted the Venerable Nagita and stood aside, saying, Where is the Blessed Lord staying, the Arahan Samasam Buddha? We would like to see him, Mahali. Uh, <clears throat> this, uh, then... The Rambal Nagita said to this uh, Othada, Mahali, it is not the right time to see the Lord. He is in solitary meditation. But Othada just sat down to one side and said, When I have seen the blessed Lord, the Arahan, fully enlightened Buddha, I will go. Stop here for a moment. So here this, uh, uh, these emissaries, uh, they are people sent on a special mission, uh, for example, to spy or anything. And this uh, Othada, the Lichavi, uh, uh, the Venerable Nagita calls him Mahali, that is the family name, uh, surname. Uh, in uh, India, uh, the clan is very important, the caste. Uh, so uh, people like to know uh, uh, who your uh, caste is, uh, your family name is, uh, and then they can tell what caste you belong to. Uh. Then the novice Siha came to the Venerable Nagita, stood aside and said, Venerable Kasapa, these many Brahmin emissaries from Kosala and Magadha have come here to see the Lord. And Othada, the Lichavi too, has come with a large company to see the Lord. It would be well, Venerable Kasapa, to allow these people to see him. Stop here for a moment. So you see, Venerable eh? Nagita is addressed as Venerable Kasapa. That must be his clan name. And he said, Well then, Siha, you announce them to the Lord. Yes, Venerable Sir, said Siha. Then he went to the Lord, saluted him, stood aside and said, Lord, these Brahmin emissaries from Kosala and Magadha have come here to see the Lord. And Othada the Lichavi, likewise with a large company, it would be well if the Lord were to let these people see him. And the Buddha said, Then Siha, prepare a seat in the shade of this dwelling. Yet... <coughs> Yes, Lord, said Siha, and did so. Then the Lord came out of his dwelling place and sat down on the prepared seat. The Brahmins approached the Lord. Having exchanged courtesies with him, they sat down to one side. But Othada did obeisance to the Lord and then sat down to one side, saying, Lord, not long ago, Sunakata the Lichavi came to me and said, Soon I shall have been a follower of the Lord for three years. I have seen heavenly sights, pleasant, delightful, enticing, but I have not heard any heavenly sounds that were pleasant, delightful, enticing. 
Lord, are there such heavenly sounds which Sunakata cannot hear, or are there not? And the Buddha said, there are such sounds, Mahali. Then, Lord, what is the reason, what is the cause, why Sunakata cannot hear them? And the Buddha said, Mahali, in one case, a monk facing east goes into one-sided samadhi and sees heavenly sights, pleasant, delightful, enticing, but does not hear heavenly sounds. By means of this one-sided samadhi, he sees heavenly sights, but does not hear heavenly sounds. Why is this? Because this samadhi only leads to the seeing of heavenly sights, but not to the hearing of heavenly sounds. Again, a monk facing south, west, north goes into a one-sided samadhi, and facing upwards, downwards, or across sees heavenly sights in that direction, but does not hear heavenly sounds. Why is this? Because this samadhi only leads to the seeing of heavenly sights, but not to the hearing of heavenly sounds. In another case, Mahali, a monk facing east hears heavenly sounds, but does not see heavenly sights. Again, a monk facing south, west, north, facing upwards, downwards, or across, hears heavenly sounds, but does not see heavenly sights. In an another case, Mahali, a monk facing east goes into two-sided samadhi, and both sees heavenly sights, pleasant, delightful, enticing, and hears heavenly sounds. Why is this? Because this two-sided samadhi leads to both the seeing of heavenly sights and the hearing of heavenly sounds. Again, a monk facing south, west, north, facing upwards, downwards, or across, sees heavenly sights and hears heavenly sounds. And that is the reason why Sunakata comes to see heavenly sights, but not to hear heavenly sounds. Stop here for a moment. There is a sutta, I forgot where, where the Buddha said, it's probably either Anguttara Nikaya or Sangyutta Nikaya, where the Buddha said when he was practicing meditation, there was a stage where he could see heavenly beings, but not clearly. No, not clearly. Then he strove harder and he developed more samadhi. Then he could see them more clearly. And then he continued and then after that he can talk with them and all that. So this, uh, when your samadhi is not sufficient, uh, you develop certain certain psychic powers um, but not others. So he has, the, the meditator has to keep on practicing, uh, develop more samadhi and uh, more uh, of these psychic powers arise. La. Well, Lord, is it for the realization of such, of such samadhi states that monks lead the holy life under the blessed Lord? No, Mahali, there are other things higher and more perfect than these for the sake of which monks lead the holy life under me. What are they, Lord? Mahali, in one case, a monk having abandoned three fetters becomes a stream winner, a sotapanna not liable to states of war, firmly set on the path to enlightenment. Again, a monk who has abandoned the three fetters and has reduced his greed, hatred and delusion becomes a Sakadagamin, once returner, who having returned to this world once more will make an end of suffering. Again, a monk who has abandoned the five lower fetters makes a spontaneous rebirth in the highest sphere and without returning from that world, gains enlightenment, that is anagamin. Again, a monk through the extinction of the asavas reaches in this very life the uncorrupted deliverance by mind, the deliverance by wisdom, which he has realized by his own insight. That is another thing, higher and more perfect than these, for the sake of which monks lead the holy life under me. Stop here for a moment. Eh? So you see here very clearly, uh, this Mahali is asking uh, whether these uh, uh, states uh, of samadhi, uh, uh, which gives rise to psychic powers, uh, are, are there any things higher? And the Buddha said, yes. And what is higher? Uh, are these Aryan stages? Uh, Aryan stages uh, are always higher than any type of uh, samadhi or any type of psychic powers. Because uh, these... Uh, Psychic powers, these samadhis, uh, you can lose them. But once you attain these Aryan stages, uh, Sotapanna, Sakadagamin, Anagamin, Arahanhut, uh, it is permanent. You never lose them. Uh. And besides, uh, 
uh, you are forever uh, uh, unable to take rebirth in the woeful pains, uh, to become a ghost animal or fall into hell. That being so, uh, we are no, once you become an Arya, you are no more scared of samsara. Uh, no more scared of uh, dying and being reborn because uh, once you're an Arya, you can only be reborn as a human being or as a Deva or Devi. And even if you come back as a human being, uh, you will have a very, very good life uh, because an Aryan uh, is, uh, has a great merit. Uh. Uh, the highest merit a person can attain uh, is to become an Arahan. And lower than that uh, is the Anagamin, and lower than that Sakadagamin, lower than that is the Sotapanna. Uh, so all these Aryan stages uh, are very uh, meritorious, uh, and a person uh, is uh, highly blessed uh, by having these Aryan stages. Uh. So we should strive for these uh, Aryan stages, not so much uh, the uh, states of Samadhi. Uh. There are some people they don't understand. Uh. They keep striving for jhana or jnana and all that. Nah. They don't understand nah, that the easier way nah, is to just to listen to the suttas. Nah, and study the nikayas again and again. When you understand, you attain right view. Once you attain right view, you have entered the stream, attain the first path. And the first path will t- turn into sotapanna, first fruit, nah, within a uh, period nah, before you die. Nah. Before the person dies, nah, the path will definitely turn into fruit. Nah. Uh, and then you are secure. Mm. Lord, is there a path, is there a method for the realization of these things? That means these are in stages. La. There is a path, Mahali, there is a method. And what, Lord, is this path? What is this method? And the Buddha said, it is the noble eightfold path, namely right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. This is the path. This is the way to the, to the realization of these things. Uh, stop here for a moment. Uh. So you see, uh, the Buddha only taught one path, that is the Noble Eightfold Path. And that is the way to liberation, the way to become an Arya. And there is no other path. Uh, the, uh, sometimes people say Satipatthana is the only way. Satipatthana is not the only way. Satipatthana is just part of the Noble Eightfold Path. Mm. Uh, and. Uh, so, sometimes also certain books say uh, the Buddha taught 84,000 Dharma doors. The Buddha never taught 84,000 Dharma doors, only taught one Dharma door. That is the Noble Eightfold Path. Uh, if you think the Buddha taught 84,000 Dharma doors, and then you practice all kinds of rubbish, uh, and you will never attain liberation. Once, Mahali, I was staying at Kosambi in the Gosita Park and two wanderers, Mandisa and Jalia, the pupil of the wooden bowl ascetic, came to me, exchanged courtesies with me, and sat down to one side. Then they said, How is it, friend Gotama? Is the soul the same as the body? Or is the soul one thing and the body another? And the Buddha said, Well now, friends, you listen, pay proper attention, and I will explain. Yes, friend, they said. And I went on. Friends, a Tathagata arises in the world, an Arahan, Samasambuddha, endowed with wisdom and conduct, welfarer, knower of the worlds, incomparable trainer of men to be tamed, teacher of gods and humans, enlightened and blessed. He, having realized it by his own super knowledge, proclaims this world with his devas, maras and brahmas, its princes and people. He preaches the Dhamma, which is lovely in its beginning, lovely in its middle, lovely in its ending in the spirit and in the letter, and displays the fully perfected and purified holy life. A disciple goes forth and practices the moralities, etc. On account of his morality, he sees no danger anywhere. He experiences in himself the blameless bliss that comes from maintaining this Aryan morality. In this way, he is perfected in morality. And then, uh, subsequently, uh, he practices the other uh, factors uh, under charana, la, the practice of the holy life or the conduct of the holy life. La. And then uh, he uh, gets rid of the five hindrances. La. It is as if he were freed from death, from sickness, from bonds, from slavery, from the perils of the desert. Then being thus detached from sense desires, detached from unwholesome states, he enters and remains in the first jhana. 
and so suffuses, drenches, fills, and irradiates his body, that there is no spot in his entire body that is untouched by this delight and joy born of detachment. Now, of one who thus knows and thus sees, is it proper to say the soul is the same as the body, or the soul is different from the body? It is not, friend. But I thus know and see, and I do not say that the soul is either the same or different from the body. And similarly, for the second jhana, third and fourth jhana, uh, the mind bends and tends towards knowledge and vision. Now, of one who thus knows and thus sees, is it proper to say the soul is the same as the body, or the soul is different from the body? It is not, friend. And he knows there is nothing further here. Now, of one who thus knows and thus sees, is it proper to say the soul is the same as the body, or the soul is different from the body? It is not, friend. But I thus know and see, and I do not say that the soul is either the same or different from the body. Thus the Lord spoke. And Uthada, the Lichavi, rejoiced at his words at the end of the Sutta. So here the Buddha said, nah, these uh, external sect ascetics uh, ask him this question, nah, whether the soul is the same as the body or not. Nah. And instead of answering the question, nah, which uh, is not worth answering, the Buddha uh, explained nah, uh, how to practice the holy life, nah, all the practice of the holy life, nah, the factors of charana. Nah, and then res that results in vijala, the knowledges eh? and the psychic powers, etc. And finally, uh, the, that, that person on the holy path eh, attains enlightenment. So, um, so a person who knows and sees, eh, uh, he does not say whether the soul is the same or the body or the soul is different. Eh? He just knows. Eh? And this... Uh, what these external ascetics are saying uh, is just a view, uh, just an opinion. Uh, and the view, uh, the opinion, uh, or any opinion is not important at all. What is important is you practice the holy path and you know and see for yourself. Uh, a lot of people, they don't want to practice, they ask a lot of questions. Uh, uh, no need to ask all these questions, you just practice and you will know. Uh, uh, mm. So the next sutta, Jaliya Sutta, is uh, quite the same. Uh, uh, Sutta Diga Nikaya Sutta number 7 about Jalia. Thus have I heard. Once the Lord was staying at Kosambi in the Gosita Park, and two wanderers, Mandisa and Jalia, the pupil of the wooden bowl ascetic, came to him, exchanged courtesies with him, and sat down to one side. And then they asked him this question, and the Buddha, instead of answering them uh, as before, the Buddha described Charana and Vija. Uh, and the practice of the holy life and the results of the holy life uh, uh, resulting finally in enlightenment. And the Buddha said, a uh, uh, person who knows and sees, uh, he is not bothered to answer those questions. Thus the Lord spoke and the two wondrous rejoiced at his words. Uh, now we come to Sutta number 8, Maha Sihanada Sutta, the great lion's roar. So it's a bit long. Thus have I heard, once the Lord was staying at Ujunyaya, in the deer park of Kanakatale. Kana there the naked ascetic Kasapa came to him, exchanged courtesies with him and stood to one side. Then he said, Friend Gotama or Samana Gotama, I have heard it said, the ascetic Gotama disapproves of all austerities and censures and blames all those who lead a harsh life of self-mortification. Now are those who say this telling the truth or they... Or do they not slander the Lord Buddha with Lord Gotama with lies? Do they explain the truth about his Dhamma and what pertains to it? Or does some fellow teacher of a different sect deserve to be blamed for this statement? We would like to see the Lord Gotama refute this charge. And the Buddha said, Kasapa, those who say this are not telling the truth. They slander me with lies. The situation occurs, Kasapa, that I see one practitioner of mortification. Uh, that means torturing oneself. La. And with the divine eye, which is purified beyond the sight of humans, I see him arising after death, at the breaking up of the body, in a place of woe, a baleful place, a place of destruction in hell. Again, I see one practitioner of mortification, arising after death, in a good place, a heavenly state. Again, I see one who practices little austerity, arising in a state of woe. 
Again, I see one who practices little austerity, arising after death in a good place, a heavenly state. Since I can see as it is the arising, the destiny, the death, and re-arising of those ascetics, how could I disapprove of all austerities and censure and blame all those who lead a harsh life of self-mortification? <clears throat> Stop here for a moment. Uh. So here, this uh, naked ascetic, uh, Kasapa, is asking the Buddha uh, that uh, some people say uh, the Buddha disapproves uh, uh, of all ascetic practices, uh, all austerities. Uh. Uh, the Buddha said that is not true. Lah. The Buddha said nah, uh, because he has seen nah, some people practice a lot of austerities, they go to hell. But on the other hand, there are some people who practice a lot of austerities and they go to heaven. Nah. Again, he has seen some people practice little austerities, go to hell. And some practice little austerities, go to heaven. Nah. So he does not generalize lah, just by pr uh, practicing austerities. Nah. It's no good. Lah. Just by practicing austerities, you go to woeful pains of rebirth. The Buddha never says this. Lah. The Buddha is trying to say. Lah. So, in some other suttas, the Buddha says lah, that uh, whether you should practice something or not, the Buddha says, uh, if you practice something and it does not harm others, it does not harm yourself, uh, then you can practice it. Lah. But if it harms others or harms yourself, you should not. Lah. So that is one criterion. Another criterion, the Buddha said, if you practice something, it leads to an increase in unwholesome states uh, or a decrease in wholesome states, uh, then you should not practice it. Lah. But if you practice something and it leads to an increase in wholesome states uh, or a decrease in unwholesome states, lah, then you should practice it. Lah. So the Buddha himself uh, has practiced all sorts of austerities uh, before he became enlightened. He practiced so much, uh, he suffered so much, the Buddha said, uh, you cannot find another ascetic uh, who suffered more than him uh, on the spiritual path. Either the past ascetics or present ascetics or future ascetics, nobody suffered more than him on the spiritual path, the Buddha said. Uh. At, the, at the most, uh, the Buddha said, uh, they only equal him. He cannot have suffered more than him. Uh, and that, that is the Bodhisattva. And nowadays, uh, people say the Bodhisattva is just making vows. Uh, so easy. Making vows and uh, burning your hand and all that. And the Buddha, the real Bodhisattva, uh, like the Buddha, uh, he went through all the ascetic practices. Uh, so the, the Buddha, having realized it, uh, then he found uh, that certain ascetic practices which are beneficial, uh, we should practice. Those that are not beneficial, like for example, in India, there's some they hold up their hands for one year, for five years, for ten years, for twenty years, and hold their hand until the hand cannot come down. For what? It nah, doesn't benefit anybody. Nah. But the Buddha, ascetic practice, nah, like um, he eats one meal a day. Uh, to a lot of people, that is very ascetic. No? Uh, a lot of people prefer to eat four meals or five meals a day. Siu yeah, and all that. Nah. Uh, but... Uh, the Buddha only eats one meal a day. So, uh, to some people that is very ascetic. Uh, but to him, he, he doesn't consider that to be ascetic. He thinks that it's ideal. Uh, eating one meal a day, uh, he doesn't become too fat. Uh, the Buddha doesn't become too sleepy. Uh, so, uh, But some people find it difficult. Uh, so nowadays, a lot of monks uh, take two meals. Uh, that the Buddha allowed also uh, later. Uh, so... Uh, not all ascetic practices the Buddha condemned. La. Those that are beneficial, la, the Buddha uh, uh, encouraged. La. For example, begging for food, la. encourage monks to beg for their food. A lot of monks don't beg for their food. Uh, they think that is an ascetic practice. But the Buddha thinks it's very good. Why? Because it helps to cut our ego. Uh, when you beg for your food, you cannot be proud. Hmm? You have to de depend on people for your food. Hmm? So, uh, the Buddha's uh, austerities are uh, only those that are beneficial. And the Buddha said, Kasapa, there are some ascetics and Brahmins who are wise, skilled, practice in disputation, splitters of hairs, acute, who walk cleverly along the paths of views. Sometimes their views accord with mine, sometimes they do not. What they sometimes applaud, we sometimes applaud. What they sometimes do not applaud, we sometimes do not applaud. What they sometimes applaud, we sometimes do not applaud. And what they sometimes do not applaud, we sometimes applaud. What we sometimes applaud, they sometimes applaud. 
What we sometimes do not applaud, they sometimes do not applaud. What we sometimes applaud, they sometimes do not applaud. And what we sometimes do not applaud, they sometimes applaud. On approaching them, I say, in these things there is no agreement. Let us leave them aside. In these things there is agreement. There let the wise take up, cross-question and criticize these matters with the teachers or with their followers, saying, of these things that are unskillful and reckon as such censurable to be refrained from, unbefitting a noble one, black, and reckon as such, who is there who has completely abandoned such things and is free from them? The ascetic Gotama or some other venerable teachers. It may be that the wise say, of those things that are unskilled, the ascetic Gotama has completely freed himself but the other reverend teachers only in part. In this case, the wise give us the greatest share of praise. Or the wise may say, of those things that are skilled and reckoned as such, blameless to be practiced, fitting for a noble one, bright and reckoned as such, who is there who has completely mastered them, the ascetic Gautama or some other reverend teachers. Or the wise may say, of these things, the ascetic Gautama has completely mastered them, but the other reverend teachers only in part. In this case, the wise give us the greatest share of praise. The order of the ascetic Gautama's disciples, or that of reverend teachers. Uh, so, here the Buddha is saying, uh, uh, when they compare him uh, with other external sect teachers, uh, or they compare his disciples uh, with the disciples of other uh, external sect teachers, uh, then uh, the Buddha and his disciples uh, get the greatest share of the praise, uh, the more praise than, than the external ascetics. Kasapa, there is a path, there is a course of training whereby one who has followed it will know and see for himself. The ascetic Gotama speaks at the proper time. What is true to the point, the Dhamma Vinaya? What is this path and this course of training? It is the Noble Eightfold Path. Namely, right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. This is the path whereby one may know and see for oneself. The ascetic Gotama speaks at the proper time. What is true to the point, the Dhamma Vinaya. At this, Kasapa said to the Lord, Gotama, these ascetic practices of certain practices of self-mortification are considered proper to them. A naked ascetic uses no polite restraints, licks his hands, does not come or stand still when requested. He does not accept food offered or prepared for him or an invitation to a meal. He does not accept food out of the pot or pan, nor on the threshold, among the firewood or the rice pounders, nor where two people are eating, from a pregnant or nursing woman, or from one living with a man, nor from gleanings, from where a dog is standing, or where flies are swarming. He eats no fish or meat, and drinks no rum or spirits or fermented rice gruel. He is a one-house man, or a one-piece man, a two-house man, up to a seven-piece man, or a seven-house man. He exists on one, two, or up to seven little offerings. Eats only once a day, once in two days, once in seven days. He, eats to, he, he takes to eating rice only twice a month. That means once in two weeks. La. These are considered proper practices. Stop here for a moment. La. So here, this kasapa, being a naked ascetic, one who practices these ascetic practices, he's trying to tell the Buddha that all these practices are good. La. What this austerity practice by naked ascetics, la. for example, uh, he's a, a naked ascetic, uses no polite restraints. When people ask him to come, he refuses to come. Ask him to stand still, he refuses to, ex to stand still. Uh, invite him to a meal, he does not. Uh, wants to be very uh, heroic, la, macho. Uh, then uh, uh, also uh, he has this uh, uh, sense of compassion, uh, which is not uh, tempered with with wisdom, for example, if a woman is nursing a baby or pregnant, 
and wants to give him food, uh, he thinks, uh, if I take the food, uh, then the baby will not have enough to eat, then he refuses to take. No? Or if somebody offers him the food, uh, then there are some dogs standing there, uh, then he thinks, uh, if I take the food, uh, then the dogs won't have enough to eat, then he won't accept. No? Or somebody gives him food, uh, then he sees a lot of flies, uh, then he thinks, uh, if I take all this food, uh, then the flies uh, will have less food to eat, uh, then he won't accept. Uh, uh. And then here, see, uh, he eats no fish or meat. Uh, this vegetarian practice uh, also is an external sect practice, uh, not the Buddha's uh, practice. Uh. A lot of people think, uh, in Chinese we say, Se uh, chai, Se chai and Se su uh, is completely different. Se chai uh, is the Buddhist practice. Se chai is the Pakwan chai. That means we don't eat afternoon, uh, after the sun, the highest, uh, until the next dawn, uh, we don't eat, uh, that is Se chai. So Su uh, is a Taoist practice. So Su is vegetarian practice. Uh, it's not a Buddhist practice. But this Taoist practice uh, crept into Buddhism in China uh, because the emperor Liang Wuti uh, in the year 511, uh, he commanded uh, that all Buddhist monks and nuns must become vegetarians, just like Taoist priests. Uh. So, but all the time, uh, the, the people know that the Bud Buddhist monks and nuns uh, Su Chai. Uh, uh, Su Chai. So, when they start to su -su, uh, eat vegetarian food, uh, they still call them su chai. Uh, uh, so that's why there's this confusion in China uh, between uh, su chai and su su. Uh, that means uh, uh, not eating afternoon and vegetarian practice. Uh. So you see here, uh, external sex ascetics, uh, they don't eat fish, they don't eat meat. Uh, uh. And also this, uh, he begs for his food uh, from one house, from two houses, up to a maximum of seven houses. Uh. Uh, and this has crept into Mahayana Buddhism. Uh, they say uh, in Mahayana Buddhism, when you bake for your food, uh, you must not bake more than seven houses. But in Theravada, original Buddhism, uh, you can bake as many houses as you like uh, until you get enough food. Uh, uh, okay. What a man becomes, this uh, un, uh, the further the description of the ascetic practices. Uh, what a man becomes a herb eater, a millet eater a raw rice eater, a wild rice eater, an eater of water plants, of rice husk powder, of rice scum, of the flowers of all seeds, grass or cow dung, of forest roots and fruits, eating windfalls. He wears coarse hem or mixed material, shrouds from corpses, rags from the dust heap, garments of bark fiber, antelope skins, grass, bark, shavings, blankets of human hair, a horse hair, the wings of owls. He is a plucker out of hair and beard, devoted to this practice. He is a covered thorn man, making his bed on them, sleeping alone in a garment of wet mud, living in the open air, accepting whatever seed is offered, living on filth and addicted to the practice. One who drinks no water and is addicted to the practice, or he dwells intent on the practice of going to bathe three times before evening. Stop here for a moment. I uh, see here living on filth, uh, on shit. Uh, and this Bud the Buddha also practiced uh, at one time. Uh, uh, the Buddha said uh, he was eating cow shit. Uh, you follow the cows. Uh, you eat uh, dry cow dung. You eat wet cow dung. Uh, and to uh, uh, and final uh, and eventually, uh, he even ate his own shit. Uh, uh, Kasapa, a practitioner of self mortification, may do all these all these things, but if his morality and his mind and his wisdom are not developed and brought to realization, then indeed he is still far from being an, a samana or a brahmana. Stop here for a moment. Uh, during the Buddha's days, uh, uh, renunciants uh, were either called samana or brahmana. If they came from the brahmin caste, uh, they are called brahmana. If they came from the other three castes, uh, they are called samana. The other three castes, meaning the Katya caste, the warrior caste, uh, or the merchant class, or the worker class. Uh. But Kasapa, when a monk develops non-enmity, non-ill will, and a heart full of loving kindness, and abandoning the asavas, realizes and dwells in the uncorrupted deliverance by mind, the deliverance by wisdom, having realized it in this very life by his own insight, then Kasapa, that monk is termed a Samana and a Brahmana. At this, Kasapa said to the Lord, Reverend Gotama, it is hard to be an, a Samana, it is hard to be a Brahmana. Stop here for a moment. Huh? So when the Buddha says huh, that a real Samana 
or a real brahmana is one who has developed his sila, his moral conduct, developed his mind and developed his wisdom uh, and then uh, to the extent of uh, attaining uh, uh, a liberation by mind or liberation by wisdom. Uh, and that is a real samana and a brahmana. And then this kasapa, having, uh, having heard that, uh, he said, uh, that is very difficult, uh, very difficult to become a samana or a brahmana. And the Buddha said, so they say in the world, Kasapa, it is hard to be a, a Samana, it is hard to be a Brahmana. If a naked ascetic were to do all these things uh, as before, and if this were the measure and practice of the difficulty, the great difficulty of being an, a Samana or Brahmana, it would not be right to say it is hard to be a Samana, it is hard to be a Brahmana. Because any householder or householder's son, even the slave girl who draws water, could do this by saying, I will go naked, etc. Mm. But, be, but Kasapa, because there is a very different kind of asceticism besides this, therefore it is right to say it is hard to be a Samana, it is hard to be a Brahmana. But Kasapa, when a monk develops non-enmity, non-ill will, and a heart full of loving kindness, and abandoning the asavas, realizes and dwells in the uncorrupted liberation by mind and liberation by wisdom, having realized it in this very life by his own insight. Then that monk is called a samana and a brahmana. Hmm. Stop here for a moment. Nah. So uh, the Buddha is saying, uh, if you think uh, the practice of the ascetics, uh, the naked ascetics, uh, uh, as uh, stated before, uh, going naked, and uh, begging for their food, uh, uh, but not accepting if there are flies, if there are dogs. And when somebody asks you to come, you don't want to come, asks you to stand still, you don't want to stand still. The Buddha said, uh, this is not difficult. Anyone can do, even a slave girl also can do. Uh, but to, to, be, to, be, uh, to, 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 to develop your moral conduct, your mind, your wisdom, uh, and attain enlightenment, uh, that is really hard to do. Uh. At this, Kasapa said to the Lord, Reverend Gautama, it is hard to understand a, a Samana, it is hard to understand a Brahmana. And the Buddha said, So they say in the world, Kasapa, it is hard to understand a Samana, it is hard to understand a Brahmana. If a naked ascetic to, were to do all these things, and if this were the measure and practice of the difficulty, the great difficulty of understanding a, a Samana or Brahmana, it would not be right to say that because any householder son or any householders uh, uh, or even a slave girl could understand uh, what it means uh, to go naked, what it means to beg for your food, uh, what it means uh, not to stand still when people ask you to stand still, etc. But Kasapa, because there is a very different kind of Samanism and Brahmanism beside this. It is right to say it is hard to understand a Samana or a Brahmana. But Kasapa, when a monk develops non-enmity, non-ill will, and a heart full of loving kindness, and abandoning the asavas, realizes and dwells in the uncorrupted liberation by mind, the liberation by wisdom, having realized it in this very life by his own insight, then Kasapa, that monk is called a Samana and a Brahmana. Then Kasapa said to the Lord, Reverend Gautama, what then is the development of morality, of the mind and of wisdom? Uh, so here, after the Buddha explains to him uh, that uh, the real practice uh, of a Samana and a Brahmana is to get rid uh, of ill will, to get rid of enmity and to develop loving kindness uh, and abandon the asavas and attain enlightenment, uh, then... Uh, he asked the Buddha to explain how to practice all of this. Then the Buddha said, Kasapa, a Tathagata arises in the world, an Arahan, Samasam Buddha, endowed with wisdom and conduct, well fairer, knower of the worlds, incomparable trainer of men to be tamed, teacher of gods and humans, enlightened and blessed. He, having realized it by his own super knowledge, proclaims this world with his devas, maras and brahmas, its princes and people. He preaches the Dhamma, which is lovely in its beginning lovely in its middle, lovely in its ending, in the spirit and in the letter, and displays the fully perfected and purified holy life. A disciple goes forth and practices the moralities. That is the perfection of morality. He guards the sense doors 
etc., etc., and attains the four jhanas. That is the perfection of the mind. He attains various insights and the cessation of the corruptions. That is the perfection of wisdom. And kasapa, there is nothing further or more perfect than this perfection of morality, of the mind and of wisdom. Stop here for a moment. Uh. So you see the Buddha's uh, Sama Sambuddha. Uh, before I came to Buddhism, uh, I was studying Hinduism for four years. Uh, and I found uh, uh, some of these uh, Hindu saints are very inspiring. Uh. But what I noticed when I came to Buddhism was the Sama Sambuddha's explanation uh, is so detailed, uh, so clear uh, compared to the other uh, sages. Uh. Uh, so you see here, when the Kasapa asked him to explain uh, the development of morality, of the mind and of wisdom. Uh, the Buddha explains it so clearly. Development of morality, uh, all those moral practices uh, uh, that we went through uh, in Sutta Diga Nikaya number 2, la, on the verses 41 to 63. La, uh, if you recall, uh, the Buddha is talking about the seven precepts, the ten precepts, uh, not to... Uh, to uh, not to practice the shaman practices, not to make predictions, uh, all the different types of wrong livelihood, uh, not to do that. Uh, that is the perfection of morality. Uh. And then uh, the perf perfection of the mind uh, is the charana, uh, the practice, uh, the, the other practices in, under charana, uh, after the four jhanas, uh, uh, practicing mindfulness uh, and satisampajanya, contentment, uh, and all that. Uh, and uh, uh, finally, attaining the four four jhanas, uh, culminating in the four jhanas. When a person attains the four jhanas, uh, and the, the mind is fully developed. Uh, so it's called the perfection of the mind. Uh, uh, and then after that, uh, uh, he uses the... Uh, having attained the four jhanas, uh, the Buddha says, uh, the mind is malleable, pliant and wieldy. He can use it. Uh, to attain the various insights. La. So when he directs it to the various insights, uh, then he gets the various insights under Vija, which we went through uh, in Sutta number 2. The various psychic powers, uh, uh, finally, uh, the uh, destruction of the asavas, la, meaning liberation, uh, and that is the perfection of wisdom, la, when a person becomes uh, fully liberated. Uh, uh, here, sometimes the Buddha calls it liberation by mind, liberation by wisdom. Uh, and that, that, that is the perfection of wisdom. Uh, there is nothing more perfect uh, than this perfection of morality of the mind and of wisdom. Uh. Kasapa, there are some ascetics and Brahmins who preach morality. They praise morality in various ways. But as regards the highest Aryan morality, Kasapa, I do not see any who have surpassed me in this. I am supreme in this regard, in super morality. There are some ascetics and Brahmins who preach self-mortification and scrupulous austerity, which they praise in various ways. But, but as regards the high, highest Aryan self-mortification and austerity, Kasapa, I do not see any who have surpassed me in this. I am supreme in this regard, in super austerity. There are some ascetics and Brahmins who preach wisdom. They praise wisdom in various ways. But as regards the highest Aryan wisdom, Kasapa, I do not see any who have surpassed me in this. I am supreme in this regard, in super wisdom. There are some ascetics and Brahmins who preach liberation. They praise liberation in various ways. But as regards the highest Aryan liberation, Kasapa, I do not see any who have surpassed me in this. I am supreme in this regard in super liberation. Stop here for a moment. Uh. So here the Buddha is saying uh, there are other ascetics, uh, external ascetics, uh, who say they also practice the highest morality. Uh. But as far as the Aryan morality, uh, Aryan morality means the morality of an Aryan, uh, the type of morality you practice. Uh, where you can become an Aryan, uh, the Buddha says, uh, he is the highest. Uh, and then um, uh, the same uh, with uh, mm, this uh, Aryan self-motivation and austerity. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Aryan austerity means uh, the austerity practice by Aryans uh, which are beneficial, uh, which will help you uh, to attain enlightenment, uh, not those uh, that are unbeneficial. Uh, 
Uh, in that regard, the Buddha says he has uh, the highest uh, uh, austerity, Aryan austerity. Uh, and also, similarly, uh, with regard to Aryan wisdom uh, and liberation. Kasapa, uh. it may be that wanderers of other sects will say, the ascetic Gautama roars his lion's roar, but only in empty places, not in company. They should be told that this is not true. The ascetic Gautama roars his lion's roar, and he roars it in company. Or they may say, the ascetic Gautama roars his lion's roar and in company, but he does so without confidence. They should be told that this is not true. The ascetic Gautama roars his lion's roar in company and confidently. Or they may say, the ascetic Gautama roars his lion's roar and in company and confidently, but they do not question him. They should be told that this is not true. The ascetic Gautama roars his lion's roar and they question him. Or they may say, and they question him, but he does not answer. Or they may say, he answers, but he does not win them over with his answers. Or they may say, but they don't find it pleasing. Or they may say, but they are not satisfied with what they have heard. Or they may say, but they don't behave as if they were satisfied. Or they may say, but they are not on the path of truth. Or they may say, but they are not satisfied with the practice. They should be told that this is not true. The ascetic Gautama roars his lion's roar in company and confidently. They question him and he answers. He wins them over with his answers. They find it pleasing and are satisfied with what they have heard. They behave as if they are satisfied. They are on, are on the path of truth and they are satisfied with the practice. That kasapa is what they should be told. Once, Kasapa, I was staying at Rajagaha in the Vulture's Peak, and a certain practitioner of mortification called Nigroda consulted me about the practice of austerity, and he was delighted with my explanation beyond all measure. Lord, who on hearing Dhamma from you would fail to be delighted beyond all measure? I am delighted beyond all measure. Excellent Lord, excellent. It is as if someone were to set up what had been knocked down, or to point out the way to one who had got lost, or to bring an oil lamp into a dark place so that those with eyes could see what was there. Just so, the Blessed Lord has expounded the Dhamma in various ways. Lord, may I receive the going forth at the Lord's hands. May I receive ordination. And the Buddha said, Kasapa, whoever has formerly belonged to another sect and wishes for the going forth or ordination in this Dhamma Vinaya must wait four months, and at the end of four months' probation, the monks who are established in mind will give him the going forth and monastic ordination, but there can be a distinction of persons in this. And he said, Lord, if such is the case, I will even wait four years, and at the end of that time, let the monks give me the going forth and the monastic ordination. Then Kasapa received the going forth from the Lord himself and the monastic ordination. And the newly ordained Venerable Kasapa, alone, secluded, unwearying, Zealous and resolute, in a short time attain that for which young men of good birth go forth from the household life into homelessness, that unexcelled cul culmination of the holy life, having realized it here and now by his own super knowledge and dwelt therein knowing birth is destroyed, the holy life has been lived, what had been done has been done, there is nothing further here. And the Venerable Kasapa became another of the Arahans. It's the end of the Sutta. So here, you see, yeah, he asked for the going forth and the ordination. The going forth is Babaja, that means becoming a Samanera. Lah. And the ordination refers to the Upasambad, Upasampada, the higher ordination of a bhikkhu. Uh, so when he asked for the going forth, uh, the Buddha said, uh, somebody who comes from another sect, lah, external sect, uh, must wait four months. Lah. During the four months, uh, the monks will observe him, lah, whether he has uh, got rid of his wrong views. Lah. Uh, he has got rid of his wrong views and he is uh, practicing well. Lah. Then only they ordain him. Lah. Then he's, he said, uh, if that is the case, uh, he's willing to wait four years. Lah. That shows his sincerity. Lah. Uh, nowadays, uh, if you tell people, wait four months, uh, they say, ah, yeah, too long, I uh, cannot wait uh, four months. <laughs> But this, this, this man, uh, he says he's willing to wait four years. So when the Buddha saw that he was so sincere, the Buddha immediately ordained him uh, and personally ordained him. And then he, after that, he practiced very hard. Uh, and in a short time, short time could mean a few years. Uh, and then he became an arahan. Uh. 
So you see the Buddha, how the Buddha changed this man's thinking. Uh, this man originally when he came to see the Buddha, he thought he was a real ascetic, uh, practicing all the very hard uh, ascetic practices uh, of a uh, naked ascetic, uh, going naked, uh, uh, some of the things like sleeping on, on the thorns, uh, eating only certain type of herb or a millet or rice or water plants, uh, all this thing, uh, and using, uh, uh, instead of a, a, a cloth rope, uh, they, they use ropes uh, made of um, coarse hem, uh, uh, rags from the dust heap, bark fiber, antelope skin, grass, uh, human hair, horse hair, and all these things, uh, and pluck the hair. Instead of shaving, uh, they pluck the hair. Uh, and then uh, sleep in the open air, uh, eating shit, and all these things. Uh. So they think by doing all these things, uh, they are real macho, uh, real hero. Uh. Uh, but the Buddha said, uh, these things uh, uh, are not difficult to, uh, to practice, uh, but to practice the real Aryan way, uh, to perfect, uh, develop your morality, to develop your mind, and uh, to develop your wisdom. That is hard. Uh. Why? Because any lay person can practice all these austerities, ma, and even a slave girl can go naked and beg for the food and uh, sleep in the open air and all that. But to develop the, the morality, the mind and the wisdom, that is really hard. Uh, then, uh, so after the Buddha has uh, shown him uh, that uh, the real uh, Aryan practice uh, is harder to achieve uh, than the external uh, austerity, austerities. Uh, then he asked the Buddha to explain how to develop the sila, the mind, citta, and the wisdom, panya. Uh, then the Buddha explained uh, the uh, charana, vija, uh, the vija charana, uh, first charana, the practice of the holy life. Uh, various things like uh, sila, contentment, uh, uh, mindfulness and awareness, uh, moderation in eating, uh, um, eat, uh, what, uh, devoted to wakefulness, uh, um, seclusion, living in a secluded place, and meditating until he attains the four jhanas, uh, uh, that is the uh, practice of the Charana, which is basically development of sila and citta, the mind. And then using the fourth jhana, uh, use the mind to get various insights and to get various psychic powers. That is vija, knowledge. Uh, and the highest knowledge is the destruction of the asavas, destruction of the flow of the mind, the continued flow of the mind, and, uh, and become liberated. Uh, so after he heard all this explanation, uh, he was so impressed uh, that he asked to go forth uh, to be a disciple of the Buddha. And the Buddha allowed him to go forth uh, and he practiced very hard. Uh. It's just somebody like this external set ascetics, uh, they are willing to suffer, you know. They are very sincere. Uh. But sometimes the wisdom uh, is, 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 is insufficient. That's why they practice these aust austerities uh, without getting real um, fruit. Uh. For, for their hard practice. Uh. But when they come into, when they meet the real Dhamma, then they practice very hard. Uh. In a short time, they become enlightened. Mm. They are willing not to, not to sleep. They are willing to practice all the time. Uh, not to go into town, live in a forest, beg for their food and all these things. Uh. So, okay, we stop here for tonight. Anything to discuss? Oh, definitely not. This Kasapa is a clan name. There are many people uh, who are called Kasapa. That is not his real name. That's his clan name. Hmm.
This one is uh, depends on the individual, depends on past life, and uh, so it's hard to say that there's no uh, fixed rule. Uh, so very hard to say. But uh, if uh, if you find many of these Brahmins, uh, because uh, uh, they understand uh, morality and all that, uh, so. Uh, even though they have wrong view, uh, when they listen to the Buddha's Dhamma, uh, they attain stream entry. Na. Mm. So, yeah. I want to ask one question. Um, what kind of ascetic practice is praised by the Buddha? Um, in the... Um, the ascetic practices praised by the Buddha, uh, some of them are in the suttas, but uh, uh, they are called Dutangas. La. And 13 um, are mentioned uh, in the Visuddhi Maga, like begging for your food, eating one meal a day, uh, wearing rag ropes, that means ropes uh, made from cloth, uh, picked up by the roadside or in a cemetery and all that. No? And uh, of these uh, 13 Dutangas, uh, the hardest to practice uh, is the last, uh, which is to sleep sitting up. Uh. Mm. But uh, I can tell you from experience uh, that um, unless you have good samadhi, uh, you should not practice it. Uh. Uh, if you try to practice this uh, without good samadhi, uh, uh, you'll be sitting and sleeping. Uh. This is of no benefit. Uh, the aim, the aim of, of sitting, sleep, uh, sleep, or they call sitting, sleeping. Uh, the, the, the aim uh, is to stay awake. So if you have good samadhi and you don't want to lie down, uh, then you just uh, keep on nodding your head. Uh, but you're, you're awake. Uh. But you don't have any samadhi uh, in the beginning, in the very early stage, you practice it. Uh, you'll be sitting and sleeping. Uh, and you don't get good sleep uh, because uh, after two hours uh, you wake up uh, because your stomach is all cramped and you're sleeping like that. Uh, so it's a very uncomfortable position so after two hours you get up. Uh. So it's not, not worthwhile. Uh. Mm. It's just a name, la. it's just a uh, one side here, is, uh, as the Sutta says, uh, you can see, but you cannot hear, la. or you can hear, but you cannot see, la, the Devas. Mm. Uh, some of these mainstream and traditional Buddhist texts say that the Wouldn't that also send them to the lowest plane? 
No. What, what is the coming offense you mentioned? Killing the Buddha. Oh, killing the Buddha. Uh, if, if, a, if a person wants to kill, kill the Buddha, then uh, he cannot be a, a, a sotapanna, cannot be a person who has attained stream entry. Person who has attained stream entry uh, would generally not uh, not kill out of hatred. Mm. He might kill accidentally. <laughs> Once a person has become an Arya, then he has this Aryan morality. Aryan morality con consists of seven precepts. Right action, which is you will not purposely kill or steal or commit adultery. And right speech, which means he will not lie purposely or uh, carry tales to make people quarrel or uh, use uh, uh, vulgar or coarse speech or idle gossip mm. and uh, these are the seven Aryan precepts so once a person has become an Arya uh, stream entry he understands the Dhamma he understands uh, Kama Vipaka action and its result so he will not do wrong mm. and follow up if someone tries to kill the Buddha before he attains to Supernatural, would he um, have the result? Would he have to? And will he have to with the result, with the uh, karma done? Uh, uh, he did something wrong before Sotapanna. Yes, I guess he would, because uh, he still has an ego. If you have an ego, uh, Kama Vipaka will follow you. No? Yes, if he did something serious, yeah. Uh, He'll be like this. Uh, we heard that Sutta Samanya Pala Sutta, the king who killed the father. After he killed the father, the mind was very disturbed. So when he listens to Dhamma, he, he doesn't penetrate and doesn't sink in. So he cannot become a stream enterer. So somebody who has this uh, intention to kill the Buddha, even if you don't succeed, now you have a lot of hatred. And then later, if you realize that the Buddha was uh, is an enlightened being, uh, you have this so much remorse. I don't think the the mind can 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 be at peace. Uh. Ah yes, this one there, there was uh, uh, this uh, Angulimala. There's a sutta about Angulimala. He killed many people. Uh, then after that, uh, he came to the Dhamma and uh, practiced very hard. Uh, he, be, he became a monk, practiced very hard and became enlightened. Uh, actually, kill, kill, having killed so many people, uh, his mind would have been very disturbed. Uh. For him to become an Arahant uh, shows uh, he has uh, super determination. Because uh, I had a devotee in Penang who told me that he had a friend who was a gangster. And this gangster killed two people in gang fights before. And later when he, he was older, maybe in his 50s, he tried to uh, learn meditation. But the mind was so disturbed he could not calm down his mind. Could not... Uh, his mind was just swirling around, became very frightened. Uh, so for him to overcome that, uh, the determination must have been very, very strong. I'm sure uh, if he, when he tried to meditate, uh, all these uh, people he killed uh, would have uh, appeared to him, uh, all the ghosts and all that, to, to disturb him. Mm. But the Buddha went to... Uh, 
show him the path uh, because I think the Buddha saw uh, that this person uh, is capable of enlightenment uh, must have uh, very good uh, what we call good roots uh, from past life uh, hmm? this kind of case uh, is uh, exception uh, generally a uh, person who has killed even one man uh, even one person uh, I don't think you you be able to to, make, to find peace of mind. <laughs> huh? uh, but exceptions. Lah. Just like generally, yeah, lay people cannot become arahan. But in the Vinaya books, we find one, uh, a few. Lah, a few They listen to the Dhamma and become arahan. Very exceptional people. Lah. But you see, yeah, when you listen to the CD, whatever questions you wanted to ask, huh, the people at the audience would have asked already. Correct. But the, the fact that the, the question arises huh, uh, gives them an opportunity huh, to ask in future. Lah. But if they attended the Dhamma talk, huh, probably huh, since their mind is blur blur, huh, being old, huh, they would have forgotten to ask the question at that time. <laughs> what I was trying to say about listening to the Dhamma talk is you can listen again and again. Listen again and again. The more times you listen, huh, the more you will catch, you will, the more you will understand. Whereas you go to a Dhamma talk, you only listen once, only. If you miss, huh, or you forgot to ask, huh, you have lost the chance already. There are a lot of people, huh, they go to Dhamma talk, huh, they don't know how to ask questions. Or even sometimes they come to me huh, uh, after dana, huh, and then I ask them to ask questions, huh, they say, I had a lot of questions, you know, I prepared a lot of questions, and I come here, I forgot already. Huh. Uh, yeah, and then, huh, Hmm. Uh, possibly la, he was uh, following he was supposed to have been following one of these external sect uh, teachers huh? and some of these uh, they want uh, blood sacrifice la, for their god. La. So it seems uh, he may have been one of those. Uh, he, he, he did the killing uh, to, to offer to the gods. Uh, uh, so not our hatred. La. But still, uh, whatever the, the, the reason, uh, if you have killed a, a human being, uh, the coming offense is very great la, and your mind will be very disturbed. La. The fact that he could become an arahan uh, is surprising, uh, very surprising, because uh, I think out of a hundred people, uh, probably, or a thousand people, uh, only one will succeed. Uh. Anguli Mahla is in the Sutta, Majima Nikaya. So she haven't listened to the Angu uh, Majima Nikaya. <laughs> One, two, you can, uh, but uh, when we sit down in meditation, uh, we are supposed to practice meditation. And meditation uh, in the Buddha's uh, teaching uh, refers to the jhanas. Because 
in the Majjhima Nikaya, Ananda, remember Ananda was asked what type of meditation is praised by the Buddha. And he said the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. So if you are sitting in meditation, your aim should be to attain the jhanas. That means you stick to, if you are practicing the breath meditation, you only focus on your breath and nothing else. Okay? If you want to contemplate on the Dhamma, you don't have to sit down. You can walk with your eyes open uh, and contemplate the Dhamma. When you are driving the car, also you can think about the Dhamma that you have heard. So this contemplation uh, is vipassana. Vipassana is the seventh factor of the Noble Eightfold Path. Uh, meditation is the eighth factor of the Noble Eightfold Path. Real meditation, uh, we are sitting with your eyes closed. Uh, uh, vipassana is contemplation. Contemplation means uh, you put your attention on four things, la, or one of four things, la, your body, your feelings, your mind, and the Dhamma. La. Buddha's Dhamma. Uh, so that can be done uh, without sitting with your eyes closed. Mm, you can be walking, you can be standing still, you can be lying down also, you can think of Dhamma. Mm. So if you are sitting, you want to contemplate on Dhamma, you can. Uh, it's not that you cannot. Talking about the animals, or are you talking about the men? Men, killing a lot of say chicken, pig, and all. Not a human being. So? Then, then there's no point talking uh, Hama to them. Maybe they cannot listen to anything back. We are supposed to talk Dhamma only to the people who want to listen. We are not selling medicine uh, <laughs> in the market. Uh. Telling every Tom, Dick and Harry, you know. Dhamma has to be requested. People request for it, and yeah, we speak Dhamma. Uh, so you must see yeah, whether people want to listen or not. If that person will come to the Vihara, okay. he will not be able to do it. If he is interested to listen, uh, then it's good. Uh. So he, when he listens, uh, he might change his way. You know. For example, many years ago, I was giving a Dhamma talk in Penang, la, in the Penang Buddhist Association. And after the talk, uh, one lady came to me. She says uh, she sells uh, chicken rice. And so I uh, has to slaughter the chicken. So I say, why don't you buy the, from the, the what, how do you call it, the cold meat? Uh, huh? from the freezer one, uh, uh, already slaughtered one. She said that one uh, people don't want to eat, they want freshly slaughtered one, more tasty. Uh. So ask me whether it got coming offense, I say yes. So I say the best is you try to change your livelihood. Uh. And then about a year later she came to see me, she told me she changed her livelihood already. Mm. So you see, yeah, there are some people after listening to the Dhamma, they can change. It's whether they want to listen or not. Most of them, if they are not willing to change, they will refuse to listen. They won't come near. Because they know after listening, they have to change. <laughs> Many years ago also, when I was staying in a cave on Penang Hill, uh, on Sundays, usually people come to do dana, uh, uh, offer food and all that. Nah? So, uh, there was a man who came, nah, and I heard from others nah, that he's a butcher, he slaughters pigs. Nah. So I tried to talk to him, nah, but uh, no effect, nah. he refused to change. Mm. Okay, shall we end here?